stop thinking and make a plan. Turn your thoughts into a design. And this is how you control life. Planning is also not for heaven. Because in heaven, life is eternal. So let me read a statement you never saw before in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And it says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. For in the grave where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Take it, tell your neighbor, you better do it now. In other words, stop procrastinating now. Stop telling me you're going to do it five years from now. Stop telling me that one day you will do something. If you die today, you had no time to plan. And that's why you are here in this session today and those watching all over the world. God has sent me into your life. A simple man born in Bain Town in a village here to tell you, if you don't design your life, somebody will. How incredible it is. Planning without action is futile. But action without planning is fatal. Can I say it again? Planning without action is futile. How but without planning, action is fatal. You can destroy yourself without a plan. And this is why, again, it's never too late to start planning for the future. Whether you are 16 or 61, you can plan right now the rest of your life. You've been wandering through life the last 45 years. You've been drifting and letting people tell you what to do. Uh, even your marriage is basically just, you know, kind of kind of just doing what, what, what people say you should do and how you should live. The culture has taken over your life and told you what to expect. Even you as, the, as a divorcee, they told you that once you get divorced, you can't have no life after that. Don't let, don't let the people give you your life. Take control. Plan your way out of your depression. People spend years worrying about who they should marry. That's a waste of time and thinking. Get busy and do something valuable. Let them meet you in a plan. Clap. It's dangerous to marry somebody who's looking for a mate. Dangerous. Why? They're being preoccupied looking. That means they had no time to develop themselves. Which means you got a deficit, not an asset. Mmm, buy the CD just for that one. People who are progressive and focused are attractive. People who are always praying at the altar, hanging around church all day, looking for God. <laughs> People run from them. Very important. Now, I want to show you something here. <laughs> if you don't have daily objectives for your life, you qualify as a dreamer. Zig Ziglar, win that one. That was a good one. Write it down again. If you don't have daily objectives in your life, that means you know what to do every day, then you qualify as a dreamer, that's all. And dreamers are always the people who sleep under bridges on cardboard boxes. Dreams don't change your life. Plans do. Plan your way into your dream. Because this is how you make life what you want it to be. Jeremiah, again. God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know them. Which means God has a clear picture of not only where you're going, but how he wants you to get there. Remember that a plan is the distance between the beginning and the end. He created your end, that's your purpose, but he also says, I have a route to get you there. And that route has very little to do with the destination. It has more to do with preparing you for it. 
if you god wants you to do something that will make you a billionaire god knows he cannot give you a billion dollars you ain't ready for that kind of money so he got to create a plan to prepare you to handle a billion and it might mean going through a pit being sold into slavery being lied on being put in prison and then they finally come and get you and give you a billion dollars and now you can handle the stress of pressure so much of what you're going through could be a sign that something big is on the way so don't curse the darkness because the light is coming don't curse your poverty as long as you got a plan God's gonna plan you right out of poverty into prosperity and people are gonna be amazed at what God's gonna do for you in the next 12 months listen God is so good shout amen Shout hallelujah. hallelujah planning is the key to unlock your future your future is behind a beautiful door of a dream but to get through that door you need a plan and this is why we must understand the purpose for planning planning is the original reason for your existence Proverbs 19 21 says many are the plans in a man's heart but the Lord's purpose will prevail which means that God has a purpose that's supposed to produce the plan don't plan until you know God's purpose for your life so purpose is the destiny that began the journey and purpose is the end that caused your beginning it is purpose that is your predestination purpose gives birth to your plans so if you don't know where you're going you, you don't know what to plan so it's important for you to ask God this year what is my purpose in my life why did you give me birth why was I conceived what is my passion my dream what is this destiny you have for me when you find that then you make your plans to get there and God says I will take you to your destiny the many roads in life and you and I have to decide how do I go where do I go if you don't know where you're going then any road is right let me say something very important just listen to me carefully I beg you I learned this when I was 16 years old and it still guides me today there's no wrong exit can I say it again there's no bad roads in life if you're driving down the highway you will notice that there are many exits along the way what's an, what, what is an exit come on answer me loud it's where you get off that's an interesting statement get off which means that you are on something right yeah so exits take you off are there any bad exits on a highway no they're all good that's why they built them <laughs> so the exits are good they're not bad why do you pass them is the question ah now we're getting into some deep stuff here why would you pass something that's good you would pass good things all exits are good and they lead to certain places nothing's wrong with an exit but what makes you ignore them you're so smart what your destination write it down destination turns good things into bad things if you know where you're going you also know where you don't want to go and if you don't have a plan a destination a purpose people will keep telling you come to their exits and you end up in towns you ain't belong end up with people you shouldn't be associating with your greatest danger is sometimes your best friends are true or Ali and you gotta leave this highway of your life to keep company with people who ain't going nowhere life is not only measured by the things you do but also by the things you don't do write this down good is not always right that's the lesson highways are exits are good but they may not be right for you depending on where your destination is planning therefore controls 
where you exit. So there are people who send me invitations and I get hundreds of them every year. This year has been the worst of all. And I'm looking at these invitations go all over the world. I got to keep testing them against my assignment. My assignment is third world leadership training. So I got to check these exits. You know, someone said, I want you to come and speak at my pastor's anniversary. No, 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 I can't do that because that's not third world leadership training. See, so I write them back. Thank you very much for your kind invitation, but it's not in keeping with my assignment in life. They say, I'll pay you $10,000. I don't care. You don't get it. It ain't money. It's my destination. Good is not always right. There are some good people around you who ain't right for you. They ain't bad people, you know, but they just come to suck up your time, suck up your